Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Life, where today we're talking about this lovely, fluffy specimen here, which is growing in the burnt-out wreck of my white sage plant that I was so proud of when I did the video last year. Go figure. Let's hope it survives. But in the meanwhile, this thing is a volunteer. But it's a very helpful volunteer. Its scientific name is Stellaria media, or, as it's more commonly known, common chickweed. Now, there are a lot of things called chickweed that aren't actual chickweeds. That's how common names work, unfortunately. But there are a lot of things in the chickweed family that are true chickweeds. Now, what's interesting about this is it's in the Caryophyllaceae family, which is the carnation family. Yeah, it's related to pinks and carnations, cut flowers galore, which is kind of cool. Honestly, all this time I thought it was a daisy, and it turns out I was completely wrong. That's what research does for you, kids. Anyway, the name Stellaria means star. I mean, st Stellaria, Stellar, star. Yeah, you could see that. Media, on the other hand, means between or intermediate in botanical Latin, which is interesting. So, an intermediate star or between the stars? Well, the flowers are kind of star-shaped like little white stars, and you can't really see them because they're tiny, but there's, there are a few in there. There's one right there next to the pointy stick of destiny that's about to open. So I think you can see where this came from. Now, it is native to Europe. However, it is introduced and naturalized here, and it's not an invasive weed, and I use the term lightly because nothing I talk about in the series is truly a weed, just things that people think might be. It is a cool season annual, You'll find it in USDA zones 4 through 11, naturally speaking. Otherwise, it will have been introduced and intentionally grown. It prefers a soil pH of 4.8 to 7.3. But looking at this specimen, you know what happened to it? I fed it. It loves nitrogen. I mean, gangbusters loves its nitrogen, which is really neat because if you plant this and it's extra fluffy on its own, you know what you have an excessive in your soil. So it could be used as an indicator plant. So that's one use right there. By the way, don't mind the uh, carrots in the background photobombing a little bit over here. But anyway, its exposure is full to partial sun. Now here it gets morning sun and afternoon shade, so that's effectively half a day or partial. I mean, but look at how fluffy it is. So much fluff. Its height can be up to a foot, and its width can be up to a foot. And in this case, you can believe that. This is several plants, but they're growing really well. Once it gets warm, this this will fall apart, will have distributed seed, and it'll be all over. But in the winter, it is a critical source of nutrients eaten raw or cooked, and we'll get into that in more detail in a moment. It has alternative names and alternative scientific names, so get ready. It is also known as chicken wart, cratches, C-R-A-C-H-E-S, cratches, marons, M-A-R-U-N-S. I'm guessing, I'm hoping it's marons and not moron. Also known as winter weed. Now that one's totally appropriate. But its other old scientific names include all seen media, all seen apatala, arenaria vulgaris, and stellaria vulgaris. Sometimes plants' scientific names change over time because the nomenclature changes or something is noticed that puts them in a new family. I'm not exactly sure what those scientific names, but in older books, you may find it published under that name. So just, you know, if you want to research this one, keep an eye out for that. Now, here's the interesting thing. The nutrition per 100 grams of greenery, because you're eating the greens, is 30 milligrams of vitamin A, 375 milligrams of vitamin C. It keeps the scurvy off you. Arr. Anyway, the niacin is 0 0.51 milligrams, B2 is 0 0.14 milligrams, and it has 0 0.02 milligrams of B1. So, for a forage food, this is very important. Greens can help you. Don't be afraid of the green. Anyway, so, about the cooking. We're going to get to that. So, let's... It is edible fresh, so you can put this in your salad and go to town. And you should. However, the foliage carries a certain amount, a small amount of saponins, which can cause problems. If you're allergic to saponins, I suggest trying a little bit of this raw first. If you're going to try it, eat some, throw it in your salad. However, as a cooked pot herb, 
the saponins get destroyed in the cooking process and you can eat all you want. Now what I like to do with this plant is I like to harvest it and henbit, which if I find a good specimen, I will probably do an episode on that since everything's kind of not growing at the moment. It's still February. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> put them together and I make a curry out of it. And basically that involves sour cream and <clears throat> the traditional brown curry spice. And then it's served over rice. And it's amazing. And it's very, very, very healthy. It's a great alternative to your traditional store-bought spinach, but you can add in spinach and Swiss chard if you want to. Not necessary, because look at all of this. Look at all this. It's amazing. I'm going to be harvesting this uh, Sunday. It's going to be, I'm going to harvest it, and I'm going to cook it as a pot herb, just like I said, I'm going to make a soup. It's going to be amazing. Now, there is one thing you should know. When they get, these are tender at the moment, because they've been nitrogen to a point that they are tender. But wild-grown ones that are this large that have not been intentionally cultivated can sometimes have a little fiber in the stems. So you can just pluck the leaves and go to town. The leaves are delicate. The flowers are edible. New growth is always tender, so there's that. And trust me, this stuff will volunteer again next year. I guarantee it, 100%. So that's all I have for you for chickweed, which is... In this case, I'm intentionally cultivating it so it quantifies as one of our garden plants. Now, some people go, oh my god, that's a weed. Ortho told me. The herbicide company told me. To heck with herbicide companies. You have food in your backyard. It just may not be the food you're used to. Think outside of your fenced-in yard, folks. So, with that said, I hope you liked this episode. If you have any thoughts about chickweed or forage foods, which, by the way, on the blog, chickweed was number one in the forage blog last year. So if you go all the way back to like January, you'll see the write-up for it. I've corrected it with this video and gone into more detail now that I have a glorious specimen. So again, if you have any thoughts about chickweed or other forage foods, please put them in the comments. If you like this, please hit like. Please subscribe. It helps the channel. We're trying to get to that magical number of, I believe it's 500. We're working on it. It's slow. And uh, beyond that, as always, folks, keep them growing. And thank you for watching.